Faith doesn't take a break. Faith is not taking its foot off the gas. Faith is the timing of God. I talked to a pastor on Sunday. No, I talked to a pastor this week at the coffee shop. I bumped into him. And we were talking about our people coming to church. He was saying his attendance is down and just kind of pastory stuff. And I said, well, we have more people since before COVID anyways. And he was like, people come to your stuff during the week? I was like, yeah. They come and pray. They come and seek God. We had almost 40 people in the coffee in the coffee house on Friday night. A night that's been given over to the enemy by the church. On Friday night, we were getting together. And we had no agenda but to speak the will of God and to hear from God. And how many were there that it was powerful? Woo. And he, you know, he said, well, how are you getting people to come to church? And I said, I don't get them to come to church. How many of you I went and picked you up this morning? <laughs> None. Only baby ranger. He's the only one I brought here. I said, the presence of God will draw people. And if the presence of God is there, people will come. The right people will come, and they will encounter the presence of God. And if they don't come, then that's fine. It's about the presence of God. And he said, and I, then I said this, and if the presence of God doesn't come, then we'll go home. And he said, well, you got to have church, don't you? I said, no. And then he realized that's the difference. That's the difference. This is a church rising up not to go through the motions of punching a clock or checking a box or going because we're supposed to go. This is the church of God rising up on fire to say, we're here. We're preaching the gospel. We're saying what Jesus said. We're standing firm on faith. We're not coming off the gas. We're not backing off. We're taking God at his word. Take him at his word. Hey, let me read this text for you. Luke chapter 5, starting in verse 4. Jesus is speaking to a crowd in verses 1 through 3. And because he's speaking to a crowd, he hops in a boat belonging to a fisherman so that the water and the shore will move the sound out. Jesus is so smart. So he sits in this boat and he teaches from this boat. Then it says this in verses 11, verses 4, verse 4. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, whose name would later be Peter, put into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered, Master, We toiled all night and took nothing. It's actually an exclamation point. He says, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. That's my title for your hearts this morning. Take that. At your word, God. If he didn't say it, don't do it. But if he said it, you better not wait. He said At your word, we will do what we've already tried that didn't work. I've been to church. I've prayed. It didn't happen. I've wanted to get healed. I didn't get set free. I wanted to get set free from porn, and it didn't work. I wanted my marriage to be restored, and it didn't get restored. I wanted to find freedom, and I didn't find freedom. I gave my money, and nothing came back. Let me tell you something. You might have tried it somewhere else. You might have tried it at a different time. But I'm asking you today to say to God, at your word we will go back we will drop our nets in the water and we will bring back everything you have for us let me tell you what happened some of you know the story so you're like i already know i already know i already know let me remind you and let me tell you who don't know and when they had done this they enclosed a large number of fish that their nets were breaking What they had with them to gather what they needed 
wasn't even enough. If their nets had been bigger, I bet they would have still been breaking. So much so, read the text, that they called over another boat and they filled the fish in both boats and both boats were overflowing and barely made it back to shore. And the catch was so great that no one had ever heard of such a great catch of fish like that before. And let me tell you what they did then. They left the fish and followed Jesus. They just made the most money they've ever made. But let me tell you something. My God is more than money. If your God is money, he will let you down every time. Well, not every time. I'll give him three out of ten, maybe. You're happy sometimes when you get money. Then you spend it, and you're like, oh, what's next? But God, at your word, we will let down our nets. Anyone, anyone want to walk this week saying, God, at your word, I will. At your word, I will. What if you don't like the word? What if the word's not easy? What if the word requires you to go get the same net that you just cleaned, put away, and got ready for tomorrow after all day of being tired and fishing and doing what you're supposed to be great at and seeing no fruit? And then someone tells you, go out and do it again no they prayed for me it didn't work at your word God at your word I want to bring up a friend of mine Pastor Emmanuel I want to bring up Pastor Abdiel also while Pastor Emmanuel is coming up here he has moved all the way from Ghana to be here to minister, and I believe in the Lord's will to start a church here in the Metroplex. So would you give God glory by honoring Pastor Emmanuel? Both of y'all come up here. And he's already, he's already breaking our stage. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. The Lord will fix Praise it. God. The Lord will fix it. I've asked Pastor Emmanuel to be with us here today and to pray with us that people might be healed. He too has been fasting all week with me, along with Pastor Abdiel, along with many of you. And I want to ask him right now to share a piece of scripture and share some encouragement in miracles that he's seen at his own hands happen. In hopes of this, that some of you in the room that might still be doubting or wrestling with whether or not God can touch you today and make your whole life change in an instant, will say, you know what? At your word, God. At your word. Not at, not at Max's word. Not at Emmanuel's word. Not at Abdiel's word. Not at Jacob's word. At God's word. Will it be done? Share, brother. Praise Jesus. God bless you, Pastor Mac. God bless you, Pastor Abdiel. God bless you, Apostle Michael Michaels. It's good to see you. God bless you, Pastor Joe, as well. Pastor Joe Centenario. Amen. On Monday, my name is Emmanuel Rapkwe. I'm an ordained reverend minister and an apostle by calling. And my wife is also here, precious Magdalene Rapkwe. We are blessed with two girls. On Monday, after prayer, Pastor Meg, when we go home, I was going to pick something from the pantry. And amazingly, I saw a mustard seed. And I was amazed how small the seed is. I have one over here. You can't see it, but it is very small. Extremely small. I hope you see it. There is a story about a man who brought his son to Jesus to heal him. And when he brought the son, first he took the son to the disciples. And the Bible says that they could not heal him. And so Jesus came and prayed for the son and he got healed. And Jesus went back to the disciples. 
when you read Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, the, the disciples asked Jesus, why couldn't we heal the boy? And he said that because they had a little faith. But if they could have faith like a mustard seed, I began to think about what Jesus said. Does it mean that the faith of the disciples were smaller than the mustard seed? Like an atom? I was like, wow. This week I was telling my wife, it is not because as believers we don't have faith, but we have elevated our doubt above our faith. And that has been our problem. When you go into the story of Jesus and the man, Jesus Christ now appeared on the scene with Mark chapter number 9, verse number 23. And when you look at the story, the man told Jesus that I brought my son for your disciples to heal him, but they couldn't do it. And so if you can, then heal him. And Jesus said, if I can, all things are possible to them that believe. The Bible said, immediately the man replied and said, I believe, but help my own belief. Most of us over here, it is not because we don't believe. We believe, but Lord, help our own belief. I have been battling with this cancer for years. Lord, I believe that today, when I get prayed, when I receive prayer from Pastor Meg and Pastor Abdiel and Pastor Emmanuel, I believe today I can be healed. But Lord, help my own belief. I have been struggling with this addiction for years. I have done all I could to make it stop. Lord, I am here today. I know that you can heal me. I believe. But Lord, help my own belief. We can pray the same prayer or say the same thing that the man said. Lord, I believe, but help me overcome my own belief. And I pray for somebody here that as long as you are here, it means you have faith. And as long as you are willing to receive prayer, it means you want to see a change. I declare in the name of Jesus, let that change come to you. As you receive prayer, let that change come to you. As you receive prayer, let that healing come to you. In the name of Jesus. One more scripture and then I'm, I'm done. I'll share a testimony that will encourage us. You know the story, it is about a woman with the issue of the blood. In Mark chapter 5, verse number 25, the Bible says that the woman has been bleeding for 12 years. For 12 years she has been bleeding. I can't put myself in the woman's shoes, but at least I have a wife, and I know what it means for her to bleed for three days. So you can imagine if someone is bleeding for 12 good years, the kind of pain she will be in, the kind of weakness she will feel. But the Bible said that she was pressing through the crowd, and she told herself, if only I can touch his garment, I can be made whole. You can imagine the kind of crowd that Jesus Christ had. The Bible said he fed 5,000 men, excluding women and children. You can imagine this woman pressing through the crowd just that if she could touch the hem of his garment. And the Bible said when she touched his garment, she was made whole. I pray if you can have a mindset today that if only I will open up a little bit and believe God for a change, change will come to me. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the year 2019, I was preaching. And whilst I was preaching, there was this lady called Tina. Whilst I was preaching, she was crying. And she came late to church. Whilst I was preaching, she was crying. And after preaching for one hour, 30 minutes, she was still crying. That's the time we normally preach it back in Africa. 
Apostle Michael Michaels. And so after the service, I went to her and I said, why were you crying? Because you were distracting my service. And she said that my daughter, who is 19 years old, has been scheduled for surgery. And I believe that if you pray for me, the surgery will be canceled. She will be healed. I said, you believe that? She said, yes. I said, wow. So I prayed over water and I prayed over anointing oil and I asked her to give the water to the girl to drink when she gets home. And she should use the anointing oil on the path that the surgery will, will be done. On Thursday, they got to the hospital. She went through the scan and the doctors were shocked. Whatever that was wrong with her, that has to do with fire broad, had disappeared. The first question that the doctors asked there was, where do you go to church? Don't take God for granted anymore. Because they were shocked by that. I came to America in the same year, 2019, and I was with my adoptive father, Pastor Joe. And the daughter, Brianna, from California, was visiting. And then Pastor Joe told me that Brianna has an ovarian cyst. Praise God for your life. And Pastor Joe said, Emmanuel is here. When he prays for you, you can be healed. And so I picked oil, and I was about to anoint her forehead. She said, no. And I forgot that I'm not in Africa. I'm in America. I need to ask for permission. And so she allowed me to use the oil on the, on the back of her hands, and I prayed for her. Ladies and gentlemen, when I went back to Ghana, she sent me a message, and she said, Emmanuel, the cyst had disappeared. And this is the one thing she said. She said, you are an amazing adopted brother. I didn't know I was an amazing adopted brother until her cyst disappeared. May the Lord bring you to that place where the Lord will touch you in an extraordinary way that your mind about God and your faith about God will increase. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. If you let just the three of us share testimonies of miracles we've seen, you would be here until tomorrow at lunch. And you'd be fine. You'd be fine if you missed a meal. Man. I hope you were so encouraged by that word, but my hope and my prayer is that you would take that word and you would carry it throughout your day. That you would allow that word right there to not only impact just this moment, but to impact tomorrow and to impact the next week and to impact the next month and the next year in your family. Allow it to just spread all over your life. Do not leave this moment just being a moment. It is so much more than that. And I'm excited to hear the testimonies about how God is going to move faithfully in your life. And isn't God so faithful? He faithfully moves in everyone's lives. And in a way that my wife and I have seen God move is through our finances. And why he moves is because we choose to partner our finances with our faith and we choose to give. And so maybe today is your day to begin giving. There's a couple of ways that you can give. You can go to authentic.church and give under the gift tab, or you can give through Venmo. Hey, I love you and I cannot wait to see you guys next week.